We have been dealing with a bed bug infestation. How the heck do you train for an ultra marathon? I've been thinking about my channel and the future of travel vlogging for me. Let's do this. It's day three. Day three of trying to make this vlog. I've been feeling so uninspired. I mean, so uninspired that over the last three days, I've just been staring blankly at the camera, unable to say anything. So finally, after three days, I remembered that inspiration is totally overrated. And that if you're a creative, you can't rely on inspiration to just drop down on you from heaven, blessing you with words and ideas. No, actually, most of the time, you just have to learn to rely on discipline. Good old discipline. So that's what I'm doing here in the Usambara mountains in Tanzania, learning again to rely on discipline. <laughs> Over the last week, we've been staying in this beautiful little hotel called Mambo Viewpoint, which literally sits on top of a mountain on the side of a cliff. It's actually quite unbelievable and I don't really want to leave. And I'd love to show you around. I'd love to show you inside, but we've had a little problem here. There's Mike with his drones. Oh. And this is part of our problem. So you're gonna have to excuse the mess, but over the last week that we've been here, we have been dealing with a bed bug infestation. <laughs> and no, it's not what you think it is. This place is really, really nice and we didn't pick them up here at all. In fact, we picked them up on our trek last week. You know, that last video that I made about trekking and Maasai villages. Yeah, that's where we got them. I guess part of living remotely for the Maasai people is that they have to deal with various kinds of parasites and travelers like us sometimes unknowingly end up picking them up and tagging them along. So it hasn't been particularly pleasant and Although it's the first time that I've picked anything like that up on my travels, my body hasn't really reacted very well. Here's what my feet looked like just three days ago and here's what they look like now after being covered with antihistamine cream and after I took some anti-allergy medication. And here's what my shoulders looked like three days ago and literally my entire back was covered with bites and redness like that. And here is my hand right now, much, much better than a few days ago, but oop, what? That's a tattoo. That's a whole different story that I still need to update you on. And that is coming at the end of the vlog. But the tattoo is quite, quite big. It's like, it's like this big. <laughs> All right, on to my next subject of conversation. Now, let's talk about running 250 kilometers. That's 150 miles. I didn't actually think that that was humanly possible to run that kind of distance yet. A few weeks ago, I signed up to run an ultra marathon of exactly that length. So I want to tell you about how the heck do you train for an ultra marathon? And just when you thought that running 250 kilometers sounds crazy, wait till you hear this. In your training, at no point do you run that kind of distance, not even like a quarter of that distance. So it's actually really only on race day that you get to find out what it's like to run 250 kilometers and whether you're even capable of it. This is Noor. Noor has a broken jaw. Some really crappy human smashed it some years ago. But now she's been adopted. She's quite happy. And she usually comes running with me. You gonna come today? Hey ho! <laughs> I think she's coming. A week between 10 and 15 kilometers per session and even with that training I already feel my life changing I've had to reset my priorities change my travel plans to fit my training schedule but I also get less stressed and I'm much stronger than I was I can keep going for much longer and that's amazingly rewarding 
Oh, here's a village. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Bye. The downside is that in this tiny little village on the mountain top in Tanzania, I think people have started to see me as the weird white girl from Zungu who goes running every day with the local dogs. <laughs> It's true. Coming back from a run always feels incredible, but going for a run, that's a whole other story. Even with this lofty goal in mind, even given the fact that I love running, it can still be extremely, excruciatingly difficult to motivate myself to go out for a run because I'm just too lazy sometimes. Sometimes I just can't be bothered. But you know what? I think with running, it's a bit like with this magical thing we call inspiration. You can't rely on being inspired or being motivated all the time to do the things that you should do or the things that you want to do. Sometimes you just need to work on discipline and habit and simply doing things even when you don't feel like them, if they're good for you. That is my running philosophy. So obviously with this new shift in focus in what I do in my life, because running has really changed the way that I live and prioritize my travels, I've been thinking about my channel and the future of travel vlogging for me and whether travel vlogging per se is really something that I want to be doing for the rest of my career here on YouTube or whether I want to change things up a little bit. And I'm still processing that, so I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Yeah, you guessed it right. We're just about to leave this beautiful slice of paradise. And oh, all the doggos along with it. This is Banan. He, she, I think it's a she. It's pretty substantial in size and I'll miss them all. Hey, Noor! Noor, come here. Here's my favorite. Hey, little girl. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> all right, so ahead of us is a nine hour drive to Arusha. Our next destination. just arrived in Arusha but this is not the end of the journey in fact the journey continues for another eight hours tomorrow to an incredibly special place so I'll see you in the morning good morning it's a beautiful morning here in Tanzania and I'm just off to run a small errand right there after running around town for a little while I finally found myself here in this little room in a private hospital in Arusha waiting for my COVID test. Let's do this. the last four hours and finally oh, we're taking a quick lunch break. Soliman calls this a lunch in the bush. Is that right Soliman? Lunch in the bush? Yeah. <laughs> bush lunch. So what do we have here? We have a veg box. Nice. Guys this is the key to my next update, my next big life update. Veggie box. Yes. I've gone vegetarian. I went vegetarian about eight months ago for environmental and ethical reasons. I mean, I love animals and I realized that I just, I can't eat my friends. And also the environment suffers because of animal agriculture and I felt like I just can't participate in that. So over the last few months, as I've been traveling through Europe and various other places, I literally never had any trouble saying no to hosts or participating in local life just because I'm veggie. And on that note, this is Chips My Eye, Tanzania's favorite street side snack. Basically, ch chunks of potato dipped in egg omelet. It's delicious. Do we have some guests? <laughs> Hello. You know, it's never boring in the bush. We were just having a very casual lunch and then we were joined by these three gentlemen and then this entire herd of cows with a couple of Maasai shepherds along. I'm here 
in this Maasai village in the heart of Tanzania. <laughs> Spending a couple of days with a friend of mine called Stephanie, who has invited me over to film a video about Maasai marriage, which should be the next episode on this channel. But for now, I wanted to talk to you about the end of travel vlogging for me. Why are you laughing? It's not funny. <laughs> they think it's funny. You think it's funny? You think it's funny? <laughs> this is a calabash. This is a Maasai milk container. So when women here in the village milk the cows, they milk them straight into the calabash. Inside it's very, very smoky. They actually smoke it out with fire. So all the milk that you drink in Maasai villages is likely to have a very smoky aftertaste. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I was gonna talk to you about the end of travel vlogging. I've been in the space travel vlogging for the last three years. I've been making videos about my travels on YouTube. Obviously in that time, my style of storytelling has evolved a lot and I've, I've been learning a lot and I've been realizing that a lot of the things I used to say, a lot of the situations I used to portray, I would never express them in that way anymore. I feel like they were I was being simplistic in my narrative of the world. And I hope that that's been changing and evolving. And I hope that with every new vlog or video that I make in the future, it will continue to evolve. Because see, travel vloggers, I believe, have a very big responsibility. And I, n I didn't realize this until quite recently, until about a year ago. Travel vloggers have a responsibility because they are often our window to the rest of the world. You know, we watch travel vloggers because we like to see their natural interactions. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> the people around them. There you go, take it, take it. As opposed to a journalist's view on the world, which of course is going to be focused on slightly different kinds of issues. So we trust travel vloggers. But at the same time, as a travel vlogger with now a really big audience, I feel like I have a bigger responsibility than ever to tell stories in good and bad ways. No, to, to tell the good and the bad of every story. And that's actually much, much harder than you might suspect. So here is my statement. Going forward, I want to bring you videos that are more than just travel vlogs. I want to bring you videos that are thought provoking, that are eye opening, that hopefully give you new perspectives. Videos that stand at the crossroads between casual fun vlogs and documentaries. Of course, I'll probably still make fun casual travel vlogs here and there <laughs> because why not? But I'm feeling an increasing sense of responsibility and I'm also feeling that travel vlogs just on their own at this level and at this size are no longer quite enough. I just got a makeover from Claudia. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With the coronavirus pandemic, tourism has been put on hold, but soon enough, it's going to start again. And I hope that when it starts again, it undergoes some fundamental changes. I really hope that we start traveling more slowly. <laughs> I really hope that we start traveling more slowly, more deeply, in more conscious and mindful ways. And I want to be yeah. there to take you yeah. on slower, yeah. more mindful yeah. journeys <laughs> through my travel <laughs> vlogs. Because I'd love to pave the way towards a better, more sustainable, more mindful kind of travel for the entire world in the future. And there is one more thing I promised to show you in this video, which is my new tattoo, which is quite Hi. big. Do you like it? Tattoo. Tattoo. So let me tell you about this tattoo. It's a pretty big one and there's a lot of symbols which maybe I won't explain all of them but just so you know this here in the center is the dragon blood tree. A memory from my time in Socotra Island in Yemen during the lock coronavirus lockdown earlier this year. The roots of the tree are connected to the universe because after all we're all connected. Here we've got the mountains because as you know I love being in the mountains, they're like my spirit animal. And here, this heart, we spent a lot of time with the tattoo artist thinking of the true symbol of the traveler and we realized that the true symbol of the traveler it may be the compass or it may be the suitcase but actually it's the heart because you follow your heart 
as you travel. There's a few words in here as well. Be, to be, to be in the moment, to be present, feel, to feel every moment and to tune into your heart and feelings. And here, I am the storm. Whatever happens in my life, I am, I guess I have the power to keep going, the power to withstand anything. And with this beautiful audience around me, I bid you all goodbye and I'll see you in the next video right here from this village called Lesoit in Tanzania. Bye! Doesn't matter what they say Cause we go together